Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Terra Connecting series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano project. And I got a fun video for you guys this Thursday because we're going to be talking about Mr. Add-on's IO Analog Pro board. For the cores that support it, this is going to give you 24-bit color depth out for your CRT or for your PBM. It's also going to change out the VGA port for a Saturn style connector, and it's going to have a ton of other quality of life improvements. This thing nails 99% accuracy across both RGB, component S video, and composite video, giving you the most accurate signal you can get out of your Mr. FPGA and honestly the redesign looks really nice on a PCB as well and it's just fun to be able to showcase some new hardware for Mr. So what I'm going to do is talk about the features, how you install it, what cores are going to benefit from them and some of the other things that have been improved around the board but you'll see here it basically looks like what you're used to but you're going to notice that there's a three position dip switch, some new silk screens as well as some different ports in some similar places. This is basically just an evolution evolution of the analog IO board. Now I want you to be aware that this just works as far as the 24-bit color mode with the cores that support it and that is not every single core in Mr. FPGA. But if you're looking for the best quality video out when it comes to analog, this is going to be an awesome option. Something like Nintendo 64 and 24-bit, you're going to reduce down the color banding and with the 99% accuracy, the colors you see on screen are going to be what the artist intended when they developed the game. And that is always something that we strive for, especially people that love using CRT televisions, you want an accurate representation of what you had back in the day. You will see here one of the buttons has been switched to a soft power switch, so you're going to be able to turn your Mr. FPJ on or off from the top board with just a button. And I actually really like this as a quality of life improvement, otherwise you're still going to have the on-screen display button as well as the user button because those are pretty important, especially when it comes to controller binding and skipping over some inputs. So that's definitely a nice thing as well. You'll see here on this three position dip switch, when they are all on, you're in 24 bit RGB mode. If you turn them all off, you're at 18 bit. So this is toggleable. You can pick whatever you want. So it doesn't just lock you down to 24 bit mode. This is user selectable. Now the big changes are going to be one, the USB-C power port and the Saturn AV port. The Saturn AV port is an awesome choice as far as video inputs is concerned, and there's a whole host of cables you can use. So we're getting away from the VGA port here, which honestly I like because VGA cables are quite heavy, especially on the connector, and I do feel like they can put some potential strain on your Mr. FPGA. So moving over to a smaller, lighter cable and a smaller, lighter port definitely is something that I think is going to be good in the long run. And if you don't have the cables, they're readily available. Mr. Add-on sells them. You can grab them anywhere online. It is a very standard as far as retro gaming is concerned. So that is nice. And of course, you've got your audio port as well. And we'll talk about the dip switches on the actual DE10 in just a moment. You're going to see we also still have that can for sync on green. So if you want to sync on green for anything like component video, that's going to be an option for you. And we have a new header as well. I'm going to show you guys how to install all of this in just a moment. You even get a quote from Jack Burton, Big Trouble Little China, 6.9 on the Richter scale, but I did fix this for Pork Chop, Mr. Add-ons, by putting it on an Escape from New York poster, still the best John Carpenter movie featuring Kurt Russell ever. Now, if you take a look at the I.O. boards, one on top of the other, old versus new, you can see that it's the exact same footprint. This is going to install in any of your Mr. Triple Stacks. All it is doing is moving the audio port, it's changing the power, and it's changing the AV jack as well. But if you have a Mr. Add-on's case, he sells a new back plate with new cutouts, and I'll show you guys that as well. But this is just plug and play in whatever your setup might be. And of course, it still keeps that same user port that you were going to be using if you want to do any sort of snack adapters or otherwise. And honestly, the CAN profile, I actually like it a little bit better. It's a little more low profile and feels a slight bit stronger. So if you want to do something like MIDI with the Pi Hat, this 100% works exactly like your current setup would. This isn't taking anything away, it's just adding features, including stuff like a Hi-Fi audio DAC and that integrated ADC module. It just gives you more of what you want. It gives you more color, it gives you more accuracy, and with that USB-C power in, it gives you a little bit more ease of use as well. And this thing does have integrated YC involved. So as opposed to using something like one of these adapters, which we've shown before, to get something like Compositor S video out of your I.O. board, that's now all going to be incorporated in. You are going to have to go into your INI settings to change how you want the video to come out. But on Mr. Add-on's website, he has full INI guides for every single setting. And I will leave a link to that below. And again, if you have the aluminum case 
from Mr. Add-ons, you can just get a new backplate. He's going to be selling those separately. It's not too much whatsoever. So you basically just unscrew the four screws at the back of your Mr. Case and you can pop a brand new IO shield on. This is a demo model, so there's a little text there that I don't think is going to be in the final. But otherwise, this is going to allow you to accommodate for that new setup, the USB-C power in, the Saturn AV jack, and there is another IO board as well that's going to allow you to do both dual RAM and analog out in a very specific manner. I will probably do a video on that in the future if you guys are curious, leave me a comment down below. Now if you take a look here, the power is going to change completely on what you're used to. Normally we have these two barrel jacks here and we're going to be putting a power splitter in. This is the most common Mr. Setup right now, unless you have the dual RAM board or you have a power switch on that digital IO. But we're gonna be completely removing this pigtail and you're going to move into this jumper jack right here. This just connects both the DE10 Nano and the USB board. And then we're gonna be powering this new top analog pro io via usb c so it's going to be one plug one button your mister turns on your mister turns off versus having that pigtail because honestly those barrel splitters the switch in line for me at least has proven to be slightly temperamental over time You've got a power button on, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, no big deal. Now when it comes to a power adapter, anything carrying 5 volts and 3 amps will work. I use my Steam Deck adapter because it's what I had here, but honestly finding a 5 volt 3 amp power supply with a USB-C port is like finding water in the ocean. It's readily available and it's not hard to locate. Now to switch your I.O. boards out, it's basically the reverse of doing a build. And I will leave a link in my build guide below, that way if you want to see a little bit more in-depth version of it, you can but all you're going to do is pop off the four standoff screws from the top and then we're going to remove that top io board to switch out the analog pro now i leave my ram module in when i do this because there is enough tolerance behind it so that you don't knock on any of the surface mount resistors you can 100 take this off and you probably should i can fit it i'm very careful but if you're concerned at all about hitting the ram just remove the module and reinstall it once you're done now so prevention is worth a pound of cure in this situation and because there are pins on both sides get your fingers underneath both directions and just start to apply light pressure wiggling up it will come off it's just like disassembling a lego just don't go crazy strong on this if it's not moving you have to check why now while you have your old IO board off, you're going to see these four dip switches here. The one on the right is zero. In the down position, you're going to have digital audio out from the jack. In the up position, you're going to have analog audio. So pick and choose wisely what you want, because if you're in a case, it's very hard to move that dip switch. You got to disassemble. Now you'll see here there is one more connector on the Pro Analog I.O. board, but otherwise it is still just like press fitting Legos together. Make sure everything is lined up in all of the pins, both male and female, and then just apply light even pressure downwards. Do not push too much in one direction or else you're going to end up in a situation where pushing the other side is slightly difficult. Install it like it is a Lego and you will be totally fine. And you will see from the side that that new connector, it is not as deep is the old connector so there are some pins exposed that is normal they are making a physical connection and you are 100 fine to go and you'll see here what it would look like with that new shield the power in you'll have those jumper jacks for the dc jumper and then you have that saturn av port out which is a nice quality of life improvement and as i showed on a previous video Finding CRT televisions or upgrading them is not the domain of someone who wants to drop $1,000 on a PVM. If you go on Facebook Marketplace, you can find free or super cheap CRT televisions all day long. Last time I checked, I saw a 27-inch Sony Wega with component video in for $75. And honestly, that's the price of like two large pizzas and a six-pack of beer here in Chicago. You can see them go up to like $230 as well for something like a flat screen with component, which isn't the worst price, but the point is if you want to get a better or if you want to get into CRT televisions it is not as expensive as you have heard and just playing around with a Nintendo 64 core here I love all the options Mr. FPJ gives us you can play Mario with all of these pixels on on 24-bit color mode on a PVM or you can turn on the filtering and you can just have that 24-bit color mode active on RGB or anything else and that is the really fun part of Mr. FPJ it's unlimited options to do whatever you 
you want. And for me personally, I'm going to now leave my IO Pro analog board hooked up to my 20 inch PVM when I want to play Mr. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below though. I'm happy to help each and every one of you out if you have any other clarification needs from this video. But trust me, if you love your CRT television, if you love Mr. FPJ, upgrading the board might be a fun new feature for 2024. For that, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.